Hello, uh, my name is Russell Schwartz, so I'm a computational biologist. And I, uh, I'm not a leader in open access or anything like that, but I am a scientist, so I wanted to share some of my experiences with using open access, some of my experiences in the field. So being a computational biologist formally means that I'm someone who works on applying computer science to problems in biology. But more informally, it really means that I have to draw on many different disciplines to do the work I do. So I read and publish in journals of biology and medicine, journals and conferences of computer science, but also mathematics, physics, chemistry, I don't know how many different kinds of engineering. And this ends up being a real challenge because every field you find does things their own way. And often at the intersection of these different fields, you, you can have a, a lot of difficulties coming up with a, a model that works for everyone. So I've been in, involved in publishing in various capacities. So of course, as a reader and an author of a number of articles, but as an associate editor for a couple of journals, as an organizer for various conferences that publish papers, so the computer science model, as Mary Shaw was saying, as well as uh, uh, being in, involved in reviewing quite a few papers in these different formats. And I have at least tried to push for open access where I can. So one example there would be I work with a computing journal, so I'm an associate editor for one computing journal, and I and the other uh, editors who work with biology went through a multi-year process of trying to convince our co-editors that they had to embrace some sort of open access option. In the end, allowing authors to pay to publish papers through this journal, fully open access. This is one of these journals that's published by a society that expects to make money from subscriptions. And just convincing our other editors that an author might be willing to pay, convincing them that this was normal in the biology world was a major uphill battle. They just didn't believe us about this. But eventually, we were able to win that battle. And the key argument that won it is that now, if you have NIH funding, you cannot publish there if they don't have some alternative for open access. And I really have to give a shout out to the NIH that having that behind us was what won us that battle. And I really hope the other sources of funding come along to uh, follow or even to push stronger uh, models of open access, because I think that will really help us win the same sort of battle in many other places. So that really is what I, I've done with, as far as open access beyond simply voting with my feet as an author and trying to favor open access forums or paying these extra fees sometimes to get my papers open access. So I thought the, the rest of what I could talk about here is why I do this, so why I think open access is important. Well, one reason is because I am a, a scientist and I know that when I perform my scientific research, I depend on the work of many other people. I have to read about work in many other disciplines and what I do builds on this work and hopefully carries the science another step forward beyond what these other scientists have done. And I want other people to then read what I do and carry their science forward building on what we've done. So promoting open access is really promoting openness, with it, which is absolutely essential to how science works. That's how science advances. So I see it as simply part of being a good scientist. A second argument, which I know a number of people have brought up, is pure self-interest. I would like to encourage other people to publish open access because I want to be able to see their papers. So it's good for me as a scientist if other scientists are publishing their work open. And likewise, it's good for me if other people are reading my papers. I'm willing to pay that extra fee, that $3,000 or whatever, to get the paper open because then more people will read my paper. And that's good for me if they're reading it, if they're building on it, if they're citing our work, and so forth. I think there's also an argument of fairness. And you, you get a feel for a lot of this if you work with editing and you're seeing a lot of uh, dealing with a lot of authors and readers, especially from other countries that don't have the kinds of resources we do. And Carnegie Mellon is fairly wealthy as universities go compared to your average university worldwide. I know it often doesn't feel that way when you're here. But uh, we have much better access than most. And still, it's quite common for me to see a paper or see an, an abstract for a paper I really want to read and discover we don't have access to it here. And that is a much bigger problem in many other universities. 
I worked a couple of years in the biotech industry before coming to Carnegie Mellon, and it's an even bigger problem there. It's very rare for a company to have the kind of library facilities even a small university has. And for researchers in the third world, there is often just no way to get access to a journal that requires you to pay for, uh, for that access. So I think it's part of just being, uh, being fair in a way that will bring other researchers worldwide into the process. And that, again, is good for the science. The more voices you have, the more diversity of people looking at and contributing to the science, the better it advances. So that is another reason why I think it's important to push for open access and to try to democratize the practice of science. And the last argument that I, I, I think is important to me and that was also brought up earlier is that it is a question of the public trust. So the great majority of serious scientific research, I would say, is done at nonprofits, especially universities, and funded by, by the public, funded through government research grants. And it's simply the right thing to do to say that if the public has paid for this research, of course they should be able to see the results of it. Of course it should be open to anyone who wants to see it. So again, it's, it's good for the science, it's the right thing to do, and I think it, it's a way to bring the average citizen more into science, to keep them interested in what's happening in science and able to appreciate what we are trying to do to advance scientific research. So again, I, I can't claim to be a leader in open access, but I'm someone who believes in it and tries to use it in his work, and I certainly hope other scientists will follow suit, and I encourage all of you to do the same if uh, that's an option to you.